Welcome to the Using My Demo Packages to Grow Your Business uh, webinar. Today, I'm going to talk about, I know you can't guess it from the name, right? But Using My Demo Packages to Grow Your Business. Let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to cover today, we're going to talk about, um, well, the fact that packages in my demo are incredibly versatile. You can use them for all sorts of things. Yes, you can use it for a block of time, a consultation, a shoppable room. Um, you can use it for all kinds of things. But we're going to talk about just a few more deeper dive and more creative uses for packages. So the first thing I want to talk about is blocks of time. Uh, we're also going to talk about shoppable lists. We're going to talk about how you can use packages as steps in your design process. And we're also going to talk about how custom design service proposals, they can packages can be used for that. I have used that uh, many times, in fact, for myself. So the first thing you need to do when you're trying to decide what you want to do with packages is take a look at your entire process, your designing, your design process from beginning to end, from the moment somebody hits your website all the way through to after you have made them happy and the project is closed out. Take a look at every single step. I recommend writing them down. If you don't already have a design process, uh, I always re recommend the My Demo Method and you can always um, reach out to us and we'll give you some of those checklists to make that part easier. But let's talk about the basic ones. So we have the qualification process, uh, intake, Development, that's when you're doing the actual design work. You've got the concept design, a uh, couple of presentations. Then you do the design development, get everything finalized, move into the delivery phase, which is when you are going ahead and placing all the orders or someone is, depending on how your design process works. And everything ends up getting installed. And then the end of the, pack, uh, end of the design process, of course, is your project closeout. And that's when everything is over, you wrap things up in a nice little bow, and you go on to the next project. Now, any of these steps can be made into a package. The idea is just that you want to cut down on the number of steps that you're having to take. You want to cut down on your um, paperwork, really. So let's go ahead. Oops. There we go. Once you've taken a look at the places that you can implement these things, and I'm going to go through all of this, we're going to walk through some actual packages uh, in just a minute. Once you know where you want to implement those packages, you need to sit down and think about what assets you're going to need before you get started. Because the actual building of the package itself takes very little time. Everything is all getting all of the things ready. So you need to consider what teaser and feature images you want. Uh, what you want your description and post-purchase information to contain, what you want your email and your um, pre-purchase agreement to have in it. Uh, by the way, the email, the custom email and pre-purchase agreement are a newer feature. So I'm definitely going to make sure to show you what that looks like uh, once we get into the actual studio. If you have any questionnaires, and this the questionnaires can be for any particular part, it does not have to be just the intake questionnaire. Maybe you have different phases and you have a different questionnaire for each phase. You can absolutely include all of those too. You just need to have them ready to go ahead of time. Appointments, that's going to be if you make a if you have um, a Calendly or Acuity or a Google scheduling link, your client can make an appointment and uh, if you've ever heard me talk about the appointments before, I love them because I can set which type of appointment has which availability, and then the client can just go in and book it based on my calendar. So my calendar rules all, my uh, availability rules all, and then the client can just choose the, the times that work best for them from that availability. Um, products and services. If you are doing a package that involves any products or services, you're going to need to know which ones you want to have ahead of time. So that's going to fall more into the shoppable room, um, your favorite finds, uh, decor bundles, stuff like that. Uh, files and media. If you have anything that you need your client to download, um, maybe you have a welcome package or a what to expect. So any of the documents that you need to have ready to go for your client right after they purchase it, that's going to go into your files and media. And then the last thing that you need to think about is, do you need to create any design boards? Now, that really is just going to depend on if you have products and services, but it's something to keep in mind ahead of time. 
when you plan things out, it goes much, much smoother when you put the actual packages together. All you need is all of the bits and pieces, and you can probably have an entire package in five minutes uh, when you have everything ready to go. And then the third thing we're going to talk about today is what does the client see? How can you know what the experience is going to be like for your clients? The answer to this is going to be test it. You do always want to test your packages. Uh, you can do it with an unpublished link ahead of time, set the price to zero. So you're not having to put money into it to do your testing and go through those links and test them. Make sure the whole process is smooth from beginning to end. I'd like to say, you know, just, just trust us, put these pieces in here and it'll be great. But really, you're going to feel much, much better if you walk through those steps yourself, if you see exactly what that looks like for your client. We're going to come over here. We're going to talk about how all of this works in action. So having said that, on your dashboard. When you log into your studio, you will find your packages over here in your studio navigation. Uh, scroll down to the bottom, and it's going to be the very bottom option right here. You're going to click on it, and it's going to take you into your packages. So here in your packages, you can see that I have a number of different packages. Um, some have the little globe showing. Some have a line through the globe. And the biggest difference between those two is this is a published package and this is an unpublished package. So if you'll recall just a minute ago, I said you need to make sure to share a link or to um, test your um, test your package links. You're going to want to make sure that it is published but private. So let's start. We're going to keep it really simple today. We're going to come in here first to the design consultation. So let's talk here about the different elements of the package. So we had them on the second slide. We had all of the different bits and pieces that you need to consider, but we're going to go over those again here. So we have here the feature image, and then you can also include additional teaser images. You can upload those right here. You click on the upload images and you can pop them in right here. If you already have some in your media gallery, you can select from there. Uh, but either way, you can put as many pictures up here as you need to. So here at the top, we have, it just says general. This is the general information. I have my package name right here. Um, I can archive packages. Packages that are archived are not visible in the store. It's gonna remove them from that list we just look, looked at on our main page. I'm working on this. I don't wanna archive it for right now. I want this to be something that will be active. This is published, so it is able to be purchased. And then over here on this side, we have this unlisted. So unlisted means it's not going to show up publicly to anyone. Only the people with this specific link right here are going to be able to access the package and purchase it. So you would need to copy the link right here and paste it into your social media, an email to a client, wherever it is, a, a message here in the studio. And that's how someone would have access to a published but unlisted package. So it just means that they don't have access to it. I'm going to leave it unlisted for right now. We're going to come back to that in just a minute. If you have any taxes you need to apply, you can do that here. You can choose the category. Um, categories are customizable. You can choose whichever. You can create whatever categories you need. You can see I have a number of different options here. Blocks of time, shoppable rooms, um, full service design, consultation. And then over here, you have your currency, which just defaults to whatever your studio is. If you need to have a different currency, you can say, uh, choose a different one right there. All right, I am going to scroll down over here. So next up, we have our description. The description is going to be the basic information about your package. This is where you're selling your services to whoever is going to purchase this package. This is your this is also what is going to show in the store page. So if I go to the store page, this is the information that the client is going or future client, depending, um, is going to see. And that's what's going to convince them to go ahead and purchase the package. Scrolling down some more, we have our post purchase information. This is where you're going to tell them what to do after they've purchased your package. 
This information is going to go right there on that project overview page um, because all packages become projects as soon as they're purchased. So this is what's going to go on that project overview page so that they can see all of it there. And it's great because they're going to be able to, as soon as they purchase it, it's going to take them straight to the package and they're going to see this information and know what to do next. And then down at the bottom of this page over here, we have our related packages. So the related packages, when you click on that, you're going to be able to see all of your packages and select which ones are going to match up with this. It's just like if, you know, when you're on Amazon, it says people liked this. They also purchased this or, you know, whatever, whatever store you've ever been to uh, online. They have things that are related to it. Same concept here. All right, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to select the view store page. And when I do that, it's going to open up this store page. Makes sense, right? So this is that feature image that I had on the package. And then all of that information that we had in the description is showing up right here. You'll notice that the name of the package is up here at the top, along with the amount of the package. And if you look over here, there is that gray button that says you are a studio designer. That's because I am currently logged in as a designer and I am not able to purchase my own package, which makes sense because why would I want to actually pay money for a package, right? Coming back over here to the package itself. I'm gonna come down here now in this menu over here underneath uh, the design consultation name and the info, we're gonna go to the email agreement. So we have a new feature, which is a pre-purchase agreement and a post-purchase email. These can be set either in your studio settings and you just select a default that always gets sent. Or if you'd like to uncheck that item, you can put whatever post or yeah, pre-purchase agreement you want would like right here. So you can copy and paste. Maybe it's just a general scope of work. Maybe it is, um, these are the things that I'm going to give you in return for this design consultation, that sort of thing. You can put your deliverables there, just list out your, well, your scope of work. And then the post-purchase information, this is the email that is sent to the clients immediately after they've pur purchased your package. Uh, it's going to have a couple of different things in it, but most of all, you get to customize what it says to the client. It's going to also give them the link to come back to the package uh, in their studio once it is purchased. And here again, if you would like to set up a specific one just for this package, you can uncheck the box and write the email right here. I'm going to show you an example of that in just a bit. The next tab is going to be where you can add your questionnaires. Uh, I do not have any embedded here right now, but I could go ahead and select add questionnaire and select from any of the templates that I already have, or I can add a new one. The next tab down is where you're going to put your appointments, if you have any appointments. Um, for a design consultation, I would probably want to have an appointment here. Here again, I'm going to select add appointment, put in a name for the appointment, like design consultation, because this is a design consultation, and then the link to that direct um, booking. Products and services. This particular project or this particular package does not have any products and services, so I'm not going to add any here. Uh, but you can see this is where you're going to add it. Next up is files and media. I always recommend adding your uh, welcome packet into the files and media section so that your clients can have access to it. And then the last one over here is going to be design boards. This is where you can create boards either straight uh, directly with products from your catalog, or you can, if you've already added products to the package, you can use those there. So here in the design consultation, you can see I did not use the design boards or the products and services. I probably uh, would want to go ahead and have a questionnaire and an appointment. And like I said, some sort of a what to expect or a welcome packet in the files and media for that. But right now, I'm going to go ahead and click out to the packages over here in my menu. That's going to bring me back to my package catalog. And we're going to take a look over here now at this lakeside office. So this is going to be an example of a shoppable room. Um, like I said, you can also do this with a finds. You can do this with decor bundles. So the consultation would work very much like you would, if you wanted to do blocks of hours, you would set it up very much like that consultation package we just looked at. 
If you want to do something shoppable where you use affiliate links or you just have links out to certain things, this is what you would want to do. So in this case, I have a package um, that is already set up. My feature images are going to be my design board and a rendering of the room so they can have a better look at what that looks like. Completely up to you what you would like to include. Here again, you can put your information up here, the description of what it is. And then over here in the post purchase information, you can also link, I don't think I mentioned this previously, but not only can you have the related packages down here, if you wanna have an automatic, hey, would you like an upsell? You can include that. And then um, if you include that as part of the post purchase information, the client can click on that link and go ahead and purchase that consultation immediately after they have purchased this particular uh, package. Here again, you can add in your um, post-purchase email. And this is where I said you can include the link to the, to the bookmark. Always recommend that they bookmark that. And then some additional information. Questionnaires, probably wouldn't need one for a shoppable room or appointments, but you might want some products and services in there. So you can see that I have a few items in here. You're going to want to create a view that has, or mul multiple views, that include all of these products so that the client can see it in whatever way you would like it to, to uh, be displayed. So just like in a, in a project, you limit the things that you want them to see. You're gonna do the same thing here in a package. That doesn't change, it functions the same way. Files and media, if you have done a rendering, you can always import that from the visualizer. You can see I have a tour included right here. And the design boards, same thing. I can go ahead and uh, include any design boards. In this case, I have an overview and then I can go over to the other one and see the um, products itself. So that's gonna be the more decorative one. So that takes care of the more common ways that people use those. Well, let's talk about some more interesting ways that people use packages. Some interesting ways that I have seen people use packages is to be for um, the different phases in their project. So if they start off with uh, specifying the fixtures and finishes and they want to add furnishing, furniture and styling um, as an add-on, you could do that. Or you could have someone say, okay, I want to do, um, you can have set blocks. So they always have to do the fixtures package. They always have to do the finishes package. They always have to do the furniture and styling package. You can have it add up in little blocks. All of those can put, be put into one shopping cart and they can purchase them all at once or they can um, purchase them separately. I've seen a number of people do this really, really well. And it's great because it keeps things very organized and the clients have a really good understanding of exactly what's going to be in that one particular portion of that. And here again, you wouldn't just want to have, like I do here, um, this is unpublished, so this is not finished, but you would give it a, a basic price. You would have, of course, your images, and then you would include all of the rest of the information. So you can do it in little chunks, like I'm going to do the plan review first, and then I'm going to specify your fixtures and finishes, and then I'm going to do the furniture and styling. And you can always have packages as add-ons that if they don't want to do this one part now, they can always add it on later or upsells. So just like we did in the Lakeside office, it's a shoppable room, but there is an upsell of being able to purchase um, a consultation with you. The last type I wanna talk about here is the proposal. So this is something that I have done um, for a number of years now, and that is to create the formal proposal for my design services as a package. So I have a number of different proposals already set up. I create them as templates and then I apply them and then edit them for the specific custom project that I'm doing. So a perfect example here. I have this one all set up. It's got the basics. It's got all of the things that I might include um, as part of the scope of work. It's also got that post-purchase information. Everything gets put in here. And then when I have a new project, I go ahead and create a new package um, from that template. And I 
create a custom. So I'll put uh, the client's name right here and it will be custom. And this is definitely a time that I want it to be published and unlisted because I'm going to give them that specific link that only they can access. I don't want anybody else to access this. It is going to be specifically for that client. Now, I like to have, um, I've got three different levels basically set up as proposals. I've got a small, uh, smaller package for or proposal for not such large projects. I've got one for kind of that medium size and I've got one for the full service, I do everything uh, type thing. I send this out before I ever do anything else. So I've had that discovery call. I've had that consultation. I know what it is that they're wanting. This is that next step before we actually dive into the project. This is just my fee. It does not include anything else. I am not including any products. This is just my own uh, proposal for my services only. And so once I've got everything in here, here again, I'm going to do the info and the the, in, the uh, description and the post-purchase info. I will do a custom pre-purchase agreement and a custom email. And you see, I've got it ready to go. I will change this. So it actually has the client's name in it before I send this specific one. So when I've created it directly for that, I'll put the person's name in it. I'll show you how to do that in just a second, but it is very specific. And then I also include the link for the mobile app. So that way they can go ahead and download it onto their mobile devices and have access that way too. I'm not going to include a questionnaire or an appointment in this particular case. I'm not going to include any products or services, but I am going to have that what to expect um, document in the files and media for them. And then I don't need a design board for this. This is just a proposal for my services. This is me saying, I'm going to do this project for you. Here's everything that I'm going to do as part of the project. And those of you who know me know that I like I prefer to do a flat rate, which is why I like doing the package as that proposal. And the, the price of the package is just that first installment, which I do cover in the description. So it's going to be payment one. I like to break it up. If it's really large, I'll break it up in chunks and just apply it um, as the project timeline moves along. But you can do it however you'd like to do your fees. So let's say I have this particular uh, proposal right here. I can save the package as a template. When I do that, because I've already taken the time to put it together, I'm going to select the template, or I'm going to add a template name, and I'm going to do I can type anymore. I think I've forgotten how to type today. There we go. And then I'm going to add a description so that I remember later what this is. Um, you can be as you can put more in there. The, the key is just what's going to help you remember which one this is. So for me, it says full scope and flat fee. That way I know it's the entire project and not just um, a part of a project. I'm not just doing uh, fixtures and finishes, for example. Once I've created that template, I'm going to go ahead and click save. And now when I create a package, I can select add package. I can give that package a name. I can select the category. In this case, it's going to be full service design. And then I can come down here and I can select that package template. And then all I need to do now is select save. Uh, when I do that, it creates a custom package for my client that is then going to be able to have this particular name and I'll send her that link. I think that covers most of it. So I'm going to go ahead and try to not try. I was going to say try and share my screen again. It's already shared. So let's come over here. A couple of things I want to show you that have to do with this as well. Uh, just little extra steps. So we have that package that we looked at earlier. Actually close that. We have the link for the apps that you saw in my email. Um, I got that by going to the help guides. I clicked on the uh, logo mark and then selected help guides and then typed app into the search and then came here. And this is where you can copy and paste the links to give that to your client so that they can download the mobile app. I also want to show you how to clip a product 
to a package because you can clip it directly to a package. So here I am on a product. I'm going to click on my product clipper and I'm going to select an image and next. Now, one thing I want to point out when you were clipping, you can kind of get an idea for how big the image is going to be by looking at how big it is here. This looks more like it's going to be a thumbnail image and so does that. So what I can do is I can click to open a larger image before I start clipping and I can click through to see the pieces that I want and then I can click it. So just a little, um, little helpful hint on how to know which one is which, how to get the best images possible. So you can see that that one is small. If I click on that one though, that one's much bigger. So I'm gonna get rid of the small one. And then just to make sure that this one is larger, I'm gonna do that. So that one's still a thumbnail. Just something to know that way you're not expecting it to be a large clear image. Right now though, I just want that one. I've got the basic information. You need to be as particular about filling this out as possible because we're gonna clip this directly back to that package. You wanna make sure that if the client is gonna to need to know the product code that you've got that, that you categorize things, that you have the manufacturer, the dimensions, all of this needs to be filled out as completely as possible. You can always go back and fill it out. Just make sure that that's part of your process. If you know that you're always gonna just do the bare basics and then go back, then all you need to do is remember the bare basics. So I know that I need the color. I'm gonna say bronze. Would help to click on the name. Um, the finish, I could do that too. I can. I need to make sure that I have the size selected so I know what um, pricing I'm going to have and all of that here. So once I've filled out all the information, because I need to be able to see it as well as the client does later. By the way, that is my product code. Thank you very much, William Sonoma. Um, this is lighting. Do I have pendants here? I believe I do. Um, I should I should grab the dimensions and all of that, but I'm gonna skip that for right now. I'm gonna come down here because I wanna show you that you can select your package and clip directly to that particular package. So for example, that lakeside office, I can select it and I can save the product. And this is gonna put it directly into that package. So you can source for a package without going into the package and then adding the items. You have two different ways to do that. By the way, if you ever really want to get a great picture, like a really, really great picture um, from a lot of websites, instead of just opening it up, if you right click and select open image in new tab, that's gonna give you a much larger image. So I can grab this link up here at the top and this is something I can always put into the product itself. Oops, my mouse is now quit. That's what I needed, right? So here I have this light fixture that I just clipped. I come over here, I'm gonna pop over the URL and put this in here and upload it. Because like I said, I like to have the best quality images. You can always go back and add better quality images if you need to. And then I'm gonna remove that one. And here again, I'm gonna select this image and I'm gonna open it in a new tab, copy the image, URL, and then I can either, um, I could do both of these at the same time by just putting a comma in between them, or I can go ahead and replace it and put the new one in there. Select upload. That's gonna give me that new one. And you can tell how much clearer it is just by looking at it. And I'm gonna remove the old one. So just some keys if you want to up, um, make things just a little bit nicer, you can grab even better quality images from a lot of the different websites that you use. And then I'm going to select done. If we come back over here to my package, let's see, I put that in the Lakeside office. And we're gonna come down here to the products and services. And there's that product that I clipped directly to it. I don't have to come back and add it later. I probably do wanna make sure I adjust the quantity um, and any pricing. And if I haven't filled it out completely, I'm going to want to fill it out. 
And right over here, I want to show you, this is the custom proposal for Susan that I talked about that we used our templates to create. So here it is. It says custom proposals for Susan. Usually I'm a little bit more specific in the name than that, but now I'm going to make it published and unlisted. I'm going to copy that link and I'm going to give Susan that link so that she can see my proposal for her and she can go ahead and make that first payment and I'm all done. She doesn't have to worry. I don't have to worry about making things complicated. It's just nice and easy and simple. Last thing I want to show you is, let's go ahead. We're going to come here and we're going to copy this link. So remember, I told you we want to make sure that we test things for our clients and we have things set up exactly the way that we would like them. So I'm going to come down here to the views, check my view. I have the all of my products showing the views. Perfect. Um, I have the quantity. I don't have pricing here, but I do have the link. So that way, maybe I'm not committing to a specific price. If if product prices are changing all the time and you don't want to include the price, you don't have to. You can just give a link to it. This is just a, hey, here's the things I found that are great. Then you can do it that way. So that looks good. I have my view set up the way I want it for the, for the clients. Um, I've gone through all of the other things. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a, um, an incognito browser. So if you don't know how to do that in Chrome, you can do control shift N. If uh, you like keyboard shortcuts, you can also come to these three dots and just select new incognito window. And that's going to bring up an incognito window. Incognito just means it is a completely unique. It doesn't have a whole bunch of the extra information. Um, so you are not considered logged in on this incognito tab. Whereas if you were in the regular uh, website where we were before, you would be. So I've pasted in the link to that name. You can see that I have this cart. I have my feature image. I have my um, additional images there. The person can add it to the cart. Once they've added it to the cart, they're able to come and review. They can see the specific pre-purchase agreement before they go ahead and sign in. So you will put whatever information you need to have here. Once they have agreed to it, they can select agreed, agreed, and fill out all of this information. So let's say, um, So I've given it myself, I'm just creating a test client that I can run through here and just make sure everything moves smoothly. So, so far, everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and select the package. And then we do often have the, um, I think that's it. We'll go with that. The CAPTCHA uh, thing to go through. And then you'll see it takes me directly into the project. So I am here on the inside of the project. It took me straight to that project overview tab. And if you'll remember, this is where I put our add-on package that they could add. So this is exactly what the process is for the client. It is nice and smooth and easy, and it takes them directly into the project. If for some reason um, they didn't get taken directly to the project, they'll be able to have that link in their package email that that post purchase email we automatically give them the link you don't have to remember to do it and they can click on it and that will take them straight here as well and then from the client point of view when you have that pre-purchase agreement it does go ahead and create that as a signed contract so they agreed to it it's going to automatically pop it in here as a signed contract that way you and they have a copy of it they have all of the products and services here, uh, just as we showed them, just as we saw that they would be able to see them. They don't have any invoices, so there's nothing there. I don't have any appointments, so they don't need to schedule it. Uh, if I come down to the files and media, that tour that we created, they'll be able to click into that and view it. And then the design boards, they'll be able to click and see the boards as well, just the ones that we made published. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to a more Q&A part of the webinar. And I'm going to start with, is there a template uh, that we can browse to get 
ideas for setup and wording, particularly when it comes to the welcome package, welcome video packages, et cetera. Uh, we do have a number of them that you can use. Really, I would say make it yourself, make it your own. You are describing your own services and we want you to have um, what fits you best, but we do have some examples that we can give you. And I actually have um, a PDF that we're gonna be sending out that will include a few bits and pieces like that to help you along. So you're not completely working from scratch here. Next up is, can we sort the order of the images relating to a package or do they need to be uploaded in the correct order? So, I'm gonna minimize that guy right there. I'm gonna come over here to our info tab. When it comes to these images, yes, you will want to put them in the correct order, do them one at a time so that you get them in the order that you want. You could do a bunch of them at once if you wanted to, um, and then just choose. But uh, I like to have them, I usually like to have things in a specific order. And if I do that, I'll just make sure that I do it one at a time because I'm very particular. So completely up to you. At any point in time, you can click this star. So let's say you uploaded three images or two images, and the one that you wanted to be the feature image didn't go up first, you can click the star and just like it, it does with your products, it's going to make that image your feature image. So if I click this, you'll see it popped that one down here and this one up here. And I can do it. And you can also by just by you'll notice just by doing the stars, um, it rearranged things for me. So that gives you a little bit of control over what goes where. So just with a couple of clicks, I was able to put it back into that original order. The next question is, I include a project timeline and a scope of work. Is there a place to add these attachments? There absolutely is. I'm actually going to come back over here to our proposal one. So there are, as I mentioned, a few different places to put that. If you want the client to go ahead and get that signed contract for the scope of work, so uh, they agree to that pre-purchase agreement and it's going to populate into the signed contract, then I would put my scope of work there. Actually, I would always put my scope of work there. I wouldn't even make it a question. Um, the timeline, I would probably put into the files and media, and you can put as many different files in here as you need to. And because it is custom for that individual, actually, I probably should have come here into Susan's. There we go. Let's do this. So because this is going to be a very, very custom package for just that one person, um, yeah, I would upload it into their files and media. And when you do that and they come along and purchase it, it's going to populate that project with all of the information that you put in here. So that agreement is going to go into the signed contract. Any folders or any files that you put here in the files and media are going to automatically populate into your projects files and media. So you're not going to have to worry about finding those later. Another great question. Okay. So let's say the client approves and by approving, they agree to that pre-purchase agreement and they go ahead and purchase the package. Do you need to create a new project? Nope, not at all. You are going to have a project automatically created for you uh, with all of that information right there. So you're not going to have to do any, any additional heavy lifting. It's just going to automatically create things. And then you can come in, for example, this is the one that we just created. Um, you can come in and make any adjustments that you need to, but that post-purchase information shows up right here. That contract shows up right here. Files and media information shows up right here. So it's ready to go. I don't have to do any additional work. Okay, the next question is, where does correspondence between you and the client appear? Messages, I always use messages. Um, messages are absolutely hands down my favorite place to correspond with my clients. Um, I would even immediately after I get the notification, well, maybe not immediately, but soon after I get the notification that the project had been created, I would come in here, I would create a new chat room, add my client to it and just give them a welcome message. And then I would keep everything in that chain. All right. The next question is, when you do a custom proposal for a project, how does the invoicing get set up if you are billing a fixed fee per phase? Well, once the package has been purchased, you'll come in here into the invoices and you'll create the additional invoices. And that uh, you're going to have the record of the purchased package in your reports. 
and then all of the rest of the information is going to go into your invoices for the additional ones. And we do have a couple of really cool changes, uh, new features coming up when it comes to purchasing packages and how that is shown. Um, but for right now, that's exactly what I would recommend. You would find the purchase for that proposal, that very first part of that in the packages reports, and then all of the rest of the invoices would just get created here by you whenever you're ready for them. This one is a good one. Um, the question is, how can you add a pre-purchase contract to a generic package without knowing the client name and location? So in that particular case, it's just a pre-purchase agreement. Um, this is not something I would do for a proposal. And so this is going to be, it is a simple, um, maybe it is a block of time or a consultation. And in that case, what I would do is for the email agreement, I would agree what the basics are. And they are agreeing what the basics are. And they're going to sign off on that in that pre-purchase agreement. If I want to have an additional layer of protection, I may want to add a contract to the project afterwards, but you can do a simple pre-purchase agreement just by, actually, let's do this. I'm going to come over here. I am going to grab this and you may want to have additional items in there, but you could, you could even do this entire section right here, copy and paste it in there. Completely up to you. and checked it and then I went away without putting anything in it. So I've got all of that information right here. I can make adjustments as I need to. And this way I'm getting their actual agreement to these particular items. So you don't have to have their name on it. This is not a full contract for a full project. This is just an initial agreement um, to the initial scope. And you can even call it initial scope when you put it in there. And yes, actually, the second half of that question was, do you just include the basics and then add a contract later with more specifics? All right. So I have another question here about the um, package cart. I'm going to come back up here. I'm going to copy this, come back here into my uh, incognito browser. So one of the things... Well, the question was, what is the package cart? So your packages, your clients can add as many different packages as they need to, whether it is one or multiple. They can add them. Uh, they can view them. They can add them. They can go to another section, add another one. So as many as you have available to them, they can add. As soon as they've got them added to the cart and they're ready to check out, and this, this goes for free and paid, they can add both at the same time or not. So they've got uh, both of these here. They can fill out their credit card details for the payment and select that they have read and accepted and then confirm the payment. So they can have multiple. When you do that, that's going to actually go into your packages report as multiple packages being purchased at the same time. That way, the amount of the purchase is going to match up with what your Stripe account says was pulled. So you're not having to go, well, they had how many packages? I have to find all of the packages and add them together. It's going to be lump summed into your um, into your reports there for you to make life easy. Is there a way to add a set of tasks from your project template into a purchased package? Technically, yes. So I'm going to, we just released a new feature. I can get my mouse to work. Come on. So we just released a new feature that allows you to create tasks from templates. So in this case, you would want to create a task template and apply it here. Um, it is a little bit more manual process than just applying your project template. So something to keep in mind before you decide to do things this way. But if you would like to, you can always come in here and create a new task and you can select any of the templates that you have already created. You can also use the same uh, task right there to create a new template. So I have create, which is just gonna create the task, but I also have save as template. So if you just wanna create some templates, you can do that. 
or I can do create and save as template, which actually does both. It puts the task here, but it also puts a copy into my templates. And you'll notice that the create task now includes the ability to put the checklist in before it was much simpler. We added this because it's going to make it easier for you to create uh, templates if you have the checklist right here. Can you go over the view options to show the products and services and how that works? So let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. Come back here to my package. And let's come here into this particular one because I know it already has some products and services. So I've got a number of products and services already that I've already added to this package. And I want the client to be able to view them in a very specific way. Now, I already have a view set up, but let's walk through the steps of what you would want to do if you were creating a view for them. So let's see, I want my client to see all of the products in here. So I'm actually not gonna do any filtering. I don't wanna have to say, okay, I wanna only see the ones that I've tagged as lighting or anything like that. I just want the whole list to be visible. Really, the only thing that I want to control is gonna be down here in the field visibility. So in this particular case, I turned off the pricing completely. Um, if the client is going to be purchasing the information, the, the products themselves, I'm probably going to want to leave that vendor information on. Definitely want to leave that image, probably the description and product code and the manufacturer. If I have notes, I would want those to show. I don't know that that's necessary here, but I could. Um, I typically don't use custom products in packages, but if you did, you could absolutely leave that open so they could see all of the sub items. I don't need to show tags or statuses. Um, I'm just wanting to show the basics. So I've gone through all of the things that I want them to see. And you'll notice that my view has changed to match what I have just set up. And as soon as I have it the way that I want it, I'm going to click create view. I'm going to verify all of my filters. And remember, I just said I don't want to filter it down. I want to keep all of the products in there. So I'm not going to make any changes. I'm going to double check the visibility to make sure I didn't accidentally leave something on that I didn't want on. And then I didn't turn something off that I didn't want off. That all looks good. The next step is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to give the view a name just to make it easier. Um, you could, if you wanted to have like, all of the lighting in one view and all of the other stuff in another view if you wanted to for the package, completely up to you. I just want one list. And I'm just gonna name it products. I'm not going to add a budget. Um, I'm gonna leave this as a card view. I could do it as a table view. I'm not gonna do any additional, anything else here. And I'm going to click save. And then if I want to check my views, I can always come over here to enter views. So I enter the views, I can see things. So I have one that was previously created and that one's gonna show up here. I can view it. When I do that, when I click on that particular view, I this is the client view. I'm seeing things the way the client sees it with a couple of exceptions. The client is not going to see the edit options and they are not going to see um, the ability to add tags so this is the one that had already been done. This is not the one I just created because if you remember, over here to this one, I turned the tags off so that you can tell the difference between the two. Either way, this is the client view. So those of you who want that toggle to see the client view, that's exactly what this is. You come into the view and this is what the client is going to view as soon as they have purchased that package. Now, because I have two different ones named the exact same thing, I'm going to go ahead and remove uh, that first one because I don't need it. But I've got it right here. Uh, the next question is, if you need help setting up a package, can you sign up for a call to be walked through it? Um, we don't have any specific calls for that right now. Uh, we do have people we, we can review you or review you. <laughs> recommend to you, refer you to, there we go. Um, it's pretty simple. We do have a few additional uh, help articles and videos to walk you through the, ind the individual steps to make it a little bit easier. But you can, of course, always come up here to the resource center and connect with support and ask them a question right there. So if there's something specific you have a question about, 
it'll be easy for you to ask the question there. And they're great. They know a lot. And if they don't know something, then they will find out for you. Uh, the next question is, if you have a templated task, where will you find the tab to add it? We don't have tasks yet in the packages themselves. You would need to do that after they have purchased it. And then you'll go in and add the task at that point. Um, can you publish the package on Facebook? Absolutely. The When you do that, you're going to come up here to the info tab and you're going to copy this link. When you copy this link, you're going to paste it into Facebook, into your post. What I recommend is paste the link into your, your actual post, wait for the website to populate down below, and then you can delete the link itself without canceling out of the um, entire thing, just to make it a little bit prettier so you don't have that specific link on there. Um, can I publish a package without mentioning a price instead of showing a price in case the project is only custom priced? I would recommend not using a package for that. Um, if, if it is something that is going to be custom, I you can, you do have the option to make it priced zero, but that does not, that wouldn't give you the customization that I think you're wanting there. Um, so I would just mention the package. You can show visuals from the package, but I don't know that I would mention pricing or um, share a specific package if they're all going to be custom. All right. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope that you all have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. And I look forward to talking to you again soon.